Hello everybody, I welcome you all to today's video. If you are a postgraduate and you're looking at entering the research area, then you might be confused about what research area to choose, isn't it? So this video is specially for you. Today we are going to see the top 10 innovative biotech research areas for fresh postgraduates. Come, let's explore the topic. So the first topic that we have for you all is developing a new method for gene editing using CRISPR-Cas9 technology, right? So what is gene editing at all? Gene editing is nothing but adding, removing or altering the genetic material that is made up in the human or even animals, right? So how do we, uh, you know, change or alter this genetic material? So that we use by the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. What is this technology? This technology is a naturally occurring system that you can see in bacteria. It's the immune system, immune defense that is used by bacteria, right? So in this particular process, CRISPR are is nothing but a particular uh, area or um, you know a segment in the DNA of the virus so that particular segment is being recognized right by the system and Cas9 is a protein system that an enzyme system that helps in cleaving this particular gene right so that is how we use the CRISPR and Cas9 system which is naturally occurring in bacteria for altering the gene of any, uh, you know, uh, any uh, of human and we are going ahead with gene editing. So, yes, you can develop a new method for gene editing using CRISPR technology. That can be one of the topic that you can do. The second is investigating the potential probiotics for the treatment of chronic diseases, right? So probiotics are nothing but they are useful uh, microflora or microorganisms that is present in our body. Now researchers have confirmed that these probiotics plays a very important nutritional role in curbing the chronic diseases. So few of the chronic diseases that can be curbed by using probiotics are uh, bowel diseases like irritating bowel or inflammatory uh, bowel diseases, gastritis or even atopic dermatitis diseases. So these are different types of diseases that can be cured. These chronic diseases can be cured with the help of probiotics. So this particular research topic can you know, help in investigating the potential probiotics that you can use for treatment in chronic diseases. The third topic that we are going to talk about is designing a bioreactor for the sustainable production of biofuels. Now, biofuels is nothing, so bioreactor first is nothing, but it's a vessel used for biochemical reactions. So in this particular vessel, of course, it's it's very simple to say that it's a vessel that's uh, used, but of course, in this particular vessel, you have a lot of factors that's been controlled, that's been monitored, and that's been optimized for the correct, um, you know, um, conversion of substrate to the product by the microorganisms, right? So that that's what a bioreactor is. And of course, biofuels so the most commonly used biofuels is bioethanol and biodiesel so how uh, you know you can do a large scale production of these biofuels using bioreactors so that is what can be a potential uh, research topic for you if you're interested in um, you know industry side especially so you can design a bioreactor for the production of biofuels the fourth topic we're going to talk about is the exploring the use of microbial communities for bioremediation of contaminated soil. Now, what is bioremediation? Bioremediation is nothing but use of microbes to remove the environmental pollutants that is there in the contaminated soil, right? So, here, uh, we use the microbes. So, these microbes will nothing but it will utilize the chemical contaminants that is that is you know present as in the form of pollutants in the contaminated soil so this microbe uses those pollutants as its energy source for its own growth so that is how you can uh, remove these pollutants from the soil using microbes and this particular process is of course called as bioremediation so one potential topic for you could be exploring the use of these microbial communities and for what bioremediation are they used so that is one potential 
initial topic. The fifth topic that we're going to see is developing a computational tool for the analysis of large-scale genomics data. So especially if you're interested in bioinformatics and computational biology, then this is a very good topic for you because here genomics um, basically is about big data, right? So genomics is nothing but the study of all the genes that's present in the body of an organism, right? So you obviously have a lot of data in genomics. So uh, whether it's altering, um, uh, whether it's analyzing the relationship between these genes or you're analyzing just one gene of, uh, you know, uh, as compared to all of these uh, genes, whether, you know, it's going to be, um, it's, it's going to cause any disease or not. So such genomic data is going to be huge, right? So humongous. So this has to be stored. This has to be analyzed. And computational methods are the, you know, way forward for storing and analyzing these data. So yes, if you're interested in uh, computers and you want to apply it in biology, then you can use these computational tools. You can develop these computational tools for analyzing and for managing this genomic data. That is the big data. The next topic that we have, so the next topic that we have is nothing but the investigating the role of microbiome in human health and diseases, right? So we know that microorganisms, um, a lot of microorganisms are involved, um, you know, for causing infections in human health, right? And of course, to study this particular investigation, you will have to know the microbiology techniques, right? Because you'll be dealing with these microorganisms and you should know how to grow them, how to determine them, how to, uh, you know, uh, change their nutrients and so so all of these techniques you must know in microbiology for you to go ahead with this particular topic and this may seem like a very research uh, heavy topic but no you can enter the industry as well with this particular topic because this is more or less related to clinical side of microbiology so yes you can be associated with hospitals you can also be associated in quality control uh, in industries or even in research so these are the different types of jobs that you can get as well if you're going into microbiology of human health and diseases. The seventh topic that I have for you, all of you is studying the potential of plant microbe interaction for improving crop yield and sustainability. So as the name itself suggests, this is especially in the area of agriculture or even plant biotechnology, we can call it, or it could also be microbiology. So it is um, uh, you know, a confluence of all of these three fields. And yes, what is this plant microbe interaction that we are talking about? It could be pathogenic like a disease causing uh, you know interaction or it could be symbiotic where it's going to help in increasing the yield or the quality of the crop yield or it could be associative as well. So these are the different types of interactions that you can find between plant and microbe and how this affects in the crop yield as well as the sustainability in the case of agriculture. So this is one potential topic that you can have. The eighth topic that we're going to talk about is developing a new biodegradable plastic material from renewable resources. So especially if you are an environment-oriented person, then yes, this is one topic that you can take up if you're really passionate about environment. Then you can take up this biodegradable plastic. So this degradation of plastic, as we all know, the plastic doesn't degrade so fast. It takes thousands of years for you know a small plastic to degrade. So that is the reason we come up with biodegradable plastic where microorganisms can degrade the plastic. So that is a biodegradable plastic. And this plastic can be produced from renewable resources. And one such renewable resource is food and agriculture products. So yes, you can be involved in developing such uh, biodegradable plastics from renewable resources. The ninth topic that I have for all of you is investigating the mechanism of antibiotic resistance in bacterial pathogens. So these days we know that because of excessive use of antibiotics by us and you know non um, you know not regulated use of antibiotics we can see that the bacteria has developed multi multiple drug resistance or we call it MDR. So in this case the bacteria has the resistance against the drug that that is used generally 
to uh, destroy it. So that is the reason, uh, you know, this multiple drug resistance is a very uh, upcoming field and people are finding it very challenging uh, these days in the healthcare sector as well as the research sector to tackle these MDR bacteria. So this is one upcoming field and it could be a very good topic for research as well. The 10th topic and the last topic that I have for all of you is exploring the potential of stem cells for tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. So stem cells is nothing but it has the potential for differentiation and also it, um, it helps in something called stem cell therapy. So regenerative medicine is also called stem cell therapy. So this particular therapy helps in repair response of diseased tissue. So that is the application of stem cells in regenerative medicine. So these are the 10 different topics that I had for all of you, right, uh, for you to uh, have it as a research topic in your, um, you know, research uh, career, especially for fresh postgraduates. If you find any of these topics like uh, really difficult or you need to know certain techniques or certain, um, you know, uh, skills that is required, if you think that you require these skills, then at Biotechnica, we have multiple workshops lined up for all of you. So do visit the link given below in the description box for more details about the workshops and internships that we have for all of you so that you can uh, really pick them up and you can take it you can take your research career ahead thank you so much and see you all until next video